welcome back here and this is to the air crash investigator I'm looking now at the 15th out of 100 revisions that I'm doing of accidents that actually happened most of all in South Africa one or two outside but um, the reasons for that the next one I'm going to have a look at today is the Taurus power glider now what a beautiful machine and uh, all I need to say is that this glider is equipped with a stowable Rotex engine right in the back here and then also in the back there there's this um, ballistic parachute that should something go wrong right now if we look at this <laughs> that this machine is sleek it is beautiful it's slippery and if there's one thing that I could say, and I don't mean that the machine is notorious for that, but it's not the first time that it's happened. But to exceed V and E or the velocity not exceeded, in other words, the design maximum velocity of this aircraft, well, it's quite easy just because she's so slippery. Great. Now, what happened during this day, the pilot went for a gliding session in the Drakensberg. And up here you can see he was busy gliding and as he came back to home base, which was down here, down the, the dive here, let me just uh, change that and to say that we're speaking about this area where we actually hit 236 kilometers per hour. And that, that in all aspects is dramatic because you can see that the velocity not exceeded is normally 222 kilometers per hour. But remember, as you go high above sea level, this will change. And you can see that here you're looking at about 175, 100 and probably 177 or some odd kilometers per hour. And he was doing 236. Um, now, exceeding the VNE. Now, remember the VNE. The velocity not exceeded uh, mentioned inside the aircraft has got what we call in the in the um, alpha flight envelope. It's got a very very small fudge factor, if you wish. So let's say you will only get about a ten percent or to a fifteen percent exceedance of the V and E at the end of the day, and you can see this was an exceedance quite a bit more than that. In other words, the aircraft was flown from the alpha range into the beta range where you're now getting that fudge factor and you're in trouble and then he flew outside that into the gamma range. And that is the range where we can say that things will go pear-shaped under certain circumstances. In fact, it mostly goes pear-shaped. All right, so it's got a little bit of a fudge factor. What we can say is that as the aircraft comes down, let's first just talk about the wings. I'm now talking about the wings as they are fitted to the aircraft here. Uh, just remember that if I take uh, this ruler and I'm trying to keep it uh, so that you can only see the thin line. Now this is the wing as seen from the front. And this is the body of the aircraft on this side. This is the tip and I'm just holding it because I'm going to use it. Well, what happens is the pilot is in the dive, he's exceeding, and all of a sudden he gets a fright and he increases the g-factor. And now the following happens is that as it pulls up, this wing starts lifting up and it starts twisting, because remember here it's on the body of the aircraft, and it starts twisting up to its elastic stop. So you can see it, it twists or talks and it will flap up. Then when it reaches the elastic stop, it will do the opposite to the elastic stop and it's up and down and up and down. And that is called torsional flexural flutter. Now, without a shadow of a doubt, this is what happened to this aircraft. Can you recover from that? Well, not really. Once that flutter is set in, uh, is set in motion, uh, it's, it's, it's got its own generation and it will carry on and the aircraft eventually will break up. Hmm. So the onset was something that we have to avoid. And the first lesson that we must learn here is V and E is a real thing. 
in aircraft. But there was a second phenomena that we are not very used to and we don't talk normally about that. And we call that the short period oscillation. Now I'm going to use exactly the same ruler, but I'm going to say this is the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. And if you can think that the aircraft pitches up very quickly and then pitches down very quickly, and it's like a sine wave that's going through it. So that's a short period oscillation. Now the length of the aircraft is pitching very hard and then pitching very hard, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And obviously that sort of smoking or snaking relationship is going through the, the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. That is quite devastating. So in this case, what the people saw from the ground is that the wheels came out and the wheels came back and the wheels came out and the wheels came back. And that's because of the high positive, high negative, high positive, high negative Gs. All right. So that's just a phenomena. Um, nothing that one can do about that. And then because of the ballistics, uh, the next uh, that was done is the pilot activated uh, the ballistic parachute. We don't know whether he um, activated it or, you know, if it was activated by all the forces that's going through. Uh, I, would, um, I would like to believe that the pilot activated because there was nothing else he could do. And that's where the ballistic parachute comes in. And had the ballistic parachute um, been able to withstand all the forces, the pilot now becomes a passenger, but nonetheless, this will go down to the ground and he can walk away. So the ballistic parachute could have saved the day. But unfortunately, one of the strands, one of the strands of the parachute broke and that collapsed the canopy and now it was just an unmanned uncontrollable drag device on the aircraft and and that obviously changed the outcome of first it was a possible tragedy and now it was an absolute uh, tragedy all right so uh, I worked out a little bit of the positive and negatives and look at the strands and and, 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 you know, how strong is this ballistic parachute? It's pretty strong. But under the uh, certain G-forces, if it was snapped open, there is a possibility that it can snap. All right. So in this case, that is basically what happened. The next question is now, what, what, how do we avoid that? It's only one thing now we can avoid it. Do not let the speed run away. There's many slippery, super slippery aircraft out there. There's been super slippery aircraft all over the show. But you as the pilot must make sure that you do not encroach V and E. And if you go over V and E and you see that, don't yank it out or pull it out. The extra G-forces will set all the other funny things into motion. What you must do is, if you've exceeded the V and E, very very gently ease the aircraft out of the dive and ease it up to climb away. But that must be done very gently. And I know it's scary to see, but if you get a fright there and you pull back, you're going to set in motion probably torsional flexural flutter. And it could then be associated as well with a sure short period oscillation. So just be super aware about the capabilities of your aircraft and never forget V&E is real. Right, so that is as far as we're going to go today.